My name is Sylvie Crowell, and I will be presenting on characterization of sintering and aging behavior for silver nanoparticle ink for aerosol printing. To begin with uh, background and some applications, um, a current technology used in biomedical applications is a passive biomedical implant. These are typically made of wires with a low channel count between four and eight channels. Um, a higher channel count would increase the tactile resolution in, for example, a prosthetic. However, the drawback here is that a higher device volume and stiffness will occur. A solution to this issue is to develop a prototype wireless lead, in this case known as the foot lead. This lead is designed to replace existing passive technology. It is a flexible electronic and is aerosol printed with silver nanoparticle ink on a substrate of amorphous silicon carbide and polyimide. As you can see here in the image on the right, this is a um, schematic of the foot lead showing its 32 silver traces fitting within four millimeters. So the foot lead is fabricated using aerosol printing, which is a relatively uh, new method of additive manufacturing, which utilizes uh, nanoparticle ink in this case. Aerosolized liquid ink is deposited onto a substrate within a sheet of gas. Nanoparticle ink is nanosized silver particles suspended in a solvent. It requires sintering to remove that solvent and densify the particles, which will lead to decreased porosity, uh, leading to grain growth and decreased resistivity. The objective of my project was to help solve some problems we encountered during the fabrication of the flip leaf prototype. So as I mentioned, aerosol printed nanoparticle ink must be cured or sintered to remove the solvent and densify the particles. In previous fabrication, we were noticing issues with insufficient densification and oversized particles. As you can see here on the image on the right, these particles are not very well densified, which can lead to very high resistivity values and poor conduction in the flip lead itself. The solution here is to determine if potentially the shelf life could be affecting the particle size through an aging study, and secondly, to determine the optimal sintering conditions for the silver nanoparticle ink. So I conducted two studies, uh, which I'll be presenting on here. To begin with materials, the substrate I used was a approximation of the flip lead substrate, in this case I used polyimid, and I used UT dot silver nanoparticle ink in a xylene solvent. For the aging study, I prepared samples by collecting the ink over a series of 10 weeks, Bi-weekly, I diluted it in one to two dilution with silanes and pipetted this onto copper TEM grooves. I then um, conducted T-sum and compared particle size distribution of the ink. For image analysis of the aging study, I was able to determine the particle size using a trainable Weka segmentation algorithm using uh, water shedding as well. Uh, the algorithm output the area and ferret diameter of these particles in my 1 million X images and I was able to compare across uh, different ages of ink to determine if particle size was changing over time. The results of the aging study, I found that with error bars of 95% confidence, there were slight differences in the particle areas and ferret, but the ferret specifically was found to have only a difference of about two nanometers in diameter across the 10 weeks. On to the sintering study. Uh, in terms of methods, I prepared um, dots, pipetted dots of uh, the silver ink pipetted onto polyimid, and then I centered these in a PID controlled oven for the following series of times and temperatures. I then imaged these samples using scanning electron micro microscopy to compare grain size and microstructure across the samples. In terms of image analysis, these SEM images were then um, analyzed using the pain intercept method from ASTM E112, um, and I was able to draw four lines of known length on each sample and count the intersections with grain boundaries to determine the mean lineal intercept and the ASTM grain size number and compare across the different sa uh, samples. Results of the sintering study. So I found a slight trend as sintering increases. Uh, generally, the mean lineal intercept increased and the ASTM grain size number decreased. As expected, the ASTM grain size number gets smaller as grain size increases. However, this trend was only found in certain samples. This trend was not seen in the 150 and 250 degrees Celsius samples. So concluded, conclusions and future work. For the aging study, I found that the age of the ink does not significantly affect the ink particle size under 10 weeks old. Um, so age and shelf life was ruled out in this case for a potential issue as long as the ink was under that 10 weeks. But I will be continuing this aging study in the future to determine if some of these issues begin coming up at longer ages. Uh, for the sintering study, I found that sintering ink causes densification and grain growth, seeing things like particle necking, some likely mechanisms of this could be grain boundary diffusion and household ripening. I found that visible porosity worsens at higher temperatures, but we'll need to do some future work to determine a clearer trend in the sintering. I would like to acknowledge all these individuals for their help in making this project possible.